ladies, Nicole here. I'm not sure about you, but something that I've been missing in this season is just sitting and chatting with people and hearing stories of what God is doing. Bloom is so excited to be launching Unveiled, a fortnightly video and podcast where you will hear from women in our community and they will be sharing their real stories of faith, love, redemption, vulnerability and hope. The heart of Unveiled comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, and it says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. We really believe that authentic conversations reflect the transforming work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we know that you will be blessed and encouraged by these stories. So keep your eye out for the link in Slice, the One Hope YouTube channel and our church social media pages. Bless you guys. Hi folks, one of the most important aspects of the Christian life is community. God wants us to form a family, local church communities that gather and do life and find purpose together. One of God's main concerns is to reverse the inevitable fragmentation of humanity that occurs when we all go our own way. Our God is a father who wants to gather his children around his table around his word and his purpose. It says of the early church in Acts 4.32, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. This act of sharing life with others is crucial for our individual spiritual vitality. Spiritual vitality is like a fire with each person representing a stick in the fire. Now, when you separate the sticks, the fire in each one quickly goes out. But when you combine them, the heat in each one is increased and sustained. That's how spiritual vitality works. And we need to be constantly reaching out of our isolated burrows to take God's hand so that he can lift us up onto a higher plane where we live out a collective purpose. The more connected you are 
to something bigger than you, the more you will transcend your own personal limits. Living a fragmented life in an isolated burrow will not grow you, and you won't get unstuck from your isolated burrow unless you reach out to God and connect with God's family. And that's what church is, the family of God's children, getting about the family business. Now this truth is more poignant than ever, I believe, in our present circumstances. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are required to physically isolate, but we don't have to spiritually isolate. In fact, we must not. For 2000 years, the Christian church has been meeting every week for prayer, worship and the word. It was only a few months ago, in March 2020, that this 2000 year old pattern has been broken. If we gathered physically, of course, we would be risking many lives in this city. We're adhering closely to the restrictions because we want to love our neighbours, not harm them. But here's my point. Given that we can't gather physically, we should be extra vigilant about staying connected and preserving the adhesiveness of our community. I've felt God speaking to us so clearly through his word in this time. The hand of God is outstretched to draw anyone up who wants a lift at this time. This is a time for growth, not stagnancy. It's a time to flourish, not languish. So I would implore you, stay connected with our corporate journey as a church family. As I've reminded you recently, we have a spiritual adversary who wants to keep us down by a divide and conquer technique. He wants to isolate you spiritually so that he can pick you off. So don't step off the train of God's family business. The answer to your greatest need right now is in what God is doing in us together. If you've stepped off the train, then get back on. And we have a number of ways for you to step into what God is doing in and through our church. The primary way is to connect into our online services on Sundays. Now this isn't about us putting on a show for you. If it was, you might be justified in just channel surfing the world for churches that do it better. No, this is about being a part of what God is doing here and now. In addition to our online services, we have life groups continuing via Zoom, and we'd love to see everyone connecting with a life group. We also have our Zoom prayer meetings. Now the church social media will keep you updated on all these and other opportunities to stay connected. It's also important that we continue to maintain a common purse for the common cause. A real community involves sharing something of our financial resources. Without sharing, we're merely a crowd, not a community. You can look on our website for details on how to give. If I share and you share, then we all share in something greater than we could ever have on our own. In the midst of all the uncertainty, let's stay connected with the only sure thing in the world today. God's purpose being worked out in and through God's church. That's us together. The church is the one and only cause that Jesus promised will endure and prevail. And remember, the church isn't an institution, it's a family, it's a community, it is us. Now, of course, that means it's also imperfect, but thankfully, God uses imperfect people to carry out his perfect plan. So be a part of it, stay connected with God's purpose and God's family, and you won't just survive through this time, you'll thrive.
One Kedge Geelong comes from humble beginnings, from serving barbecue chickens in bread rolls at our community meal, to providing hundreds of meals for our community during the height of COVID. One thing that hasn't changed is our passion and commitment to offering support to those in the community who are disadvantaged and socially isolated. Our programs are designed to empower our participants and promote community inclusion with the goal of reducing entrenched disadvantage in Geelong. Our community meal program has been a hub of activity over the years with lots of rich diversity and some lifelong friendships made. We aim to create a safe place for people to come, to be supported, to create meaningful relationships and to be a part of the wonderful things that are happening at OneCare. Our amazing staff and volunteers are always here to be listening ears and provide support however they can. We understand that times can be tough and we want to do what we can to help those most in need. Our new food bank program has been a wonderful way for OneCare to work towards increasing food security by providing nutritious meals and groceries while also spending time with our community. Walking through life alone can be tough we all need people to walk alongside us. The Coach Mentoring Program is designed to partner trained volunteers with individuals and families living with challenging life issues. Our Coach Mentors are offering practical help and mentoring towards life goals. Sometimes life can seem overwhelming and just too difficult to manage. For times like these, our professional and supportive counsellors are here for you. Our affordable counselling services provide support for individuals, couples and families in a person-centred approach. What makes all this happen is our volunteers. OneCare volunteers are an incredible group of people committed to helping their community. OneCare simply would not be able to do what we do without them and we are so grateful for them. If you would like to be a part of what OneCare is doing, we would love you to donate. You can go to our website for more information. One Care Geelong is committed to supporting our wonderful city by building community, restoring hope and changing lives. Hi everyone, welcome to church. So glad you could be here. My name's Jono. It's always a great opportunity for us to worship and praise together. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to begin our time together singing and uh, celebrating what God, not only what God is doing in our lives, but most of all, thanking Him for who He is. And so we're going to sing these words together in this song. And um, whether you're a big, big at home singer or you're kind of the awkward, I'm sitting on the couch when normally I'd be singing loud. It doesn't matter what it is. Like we want that to really, our hearts to lift towards God today. And so I encourage you to do that as we sing these words. It says, For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And so a bit of funny language, the Lion and the Lamb, what are we doing there? It's like the writer was saying, actually, God in His amazing nature, He is strong yet makes Himself humble in the person of Jesus Christ. And later on, Sal's going to talk a bunch about that, but we want to start our time and declare how good God is. We want to thank Him and we want to praise Him. So however you're going to do that now, invite you to join in and the team is going to lead us. Let's do that together. Let's sing He's Coming on the Cloud. Breaks. 
song is a really good reminder that our God is good. And if we really believe that God is who He says He is, then we shouldn't be afraid to come before Him and bring our fears, bring our questions. And that's what this song sings about. How about we be like David in the Psalms, who instead of walking away, not having everything figured out, walking away with his fears, he brought everything before the Lord, before the throne, and just laid it bare, all the mess, giving it to God. And that's what God wants. He wants us to come and work it out with Him. So this song has a lot of truths that we're going to sing and it's just going to remind us that our God is faithful, He is good and that He can be trusted. So join in when you can. You You're not afraid of our questions
are faithful So we fall into you We know you'll raise us up Lord, Lord you have told us You're for us Even when we don't understand is that worshipping together and I'm going to invite us to pray for a moment. Lord God, we just sung these words, we really want to trust you and believing that you are who you say you are. And Lord God, even though there's, you know, you are unseen, we know you are real because of the way that we have experienced you in our lives. And so there's no greater cause for celebration today and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, so glad you could be um, with us together in church today. We've got a bunch of stuff going on. And I saw during the week a bit of a highlight for One Hope Kids where uh, you've got the uh, Mass Singer competition going on. I saw a picture here of um, the amazing Steve Horman dressed up really schmick there. I'm not sure if he goes to work looking like that every day. But uh, in- invite you. I don't think it's too late to check it out and maybe vote on the Mass Singer. So One Hope Kids, families, check that out. A lot of fun. It's good. And uh, there's also a bunch of other things happening in the life of our church. A great way to keep in contact and keep in the loop is um, following One Hope on social media. Uh, we've got Alpha coming up, which you'll hear more about, or pretty close to Rego's closing on that. And also Pastor Matt is leading Christian beliefs um, shortly. And so great way to keep in the loop, social media, website. You can um, keep up to date with all the events there as well. One conversation we've been having as a as a pastoral team during the week is we've got this rolling thing. We're just talking about, hey, how can we continue to stay connected as a church during COVID-19? And, and also as kind of, you know, if you're 
connecting today in Geelong, then we kind of have less restrictions than some other people I know connecting in, in Melbourne and, and in different areas. And so, but we're thinking through how we can continue to, you know, as restrictions hopefully ease and we've got more opportunity to join together in smaller groups, what that might look like. And so really simply, we've been concentrating on how we can do now really well. How we can, what we can do right now and the opportunities that we have, just concentrating on now, doing that as well as we can, connecting and worshipping and praising God together. And then also being mindful, preparing for what may come next. But there's so much we're uncertain of, but we're just concentrating. Let's do now well. And when the opportunity comes to do whatever comes next, that we'll be able to do that as well. And so we hope you're enjoying connecting, even though it's maybe not in the way that we would hope or really desire and really anticipate that we would hope we can shortly. We've also been talking about as restrictions ease, how we can continue to have a great mix of doing things online, worshipping online together and also in person doing those things for people of different ages and stages. And so that might look different for, you know, play groups or One Hope Kids and, and seniors, whatever it, whatever the demographic might be, we're thinking through those things. It's a little frustrating. We don't feel like we've got a lot of answers sometimes, but, you know, we want to share in that commitment that we just have that great, strong conviction about being the church together and that what holds us together is our belief in Jesus and uh, that's going to see us through. And most of all, we're, we're anticipating and wanting to continue where we can create meaningful moments for people who call One Hope home. And that's, I know it sounds a little bit like, I'm not even sure if that is a variety of chocolates or what, like meaningful moments. If it's not, it should be. I'm pretty sure we've just broken copyright there. But, you know, we, we whatever we can do now and coming up, we want to create moments where, you know, we connect as a church community. And also we do what is most important, that we put Jesus at the centre of everything that we do, that we worship and praise together. And so you'll hear more about that in time um, and we'll communicate that for sure. But as a church, let's be continuing to pray that God will use us. God will not only equip us to follow Him well, but to share the good news of Jesus with other people. We're going to check out a couple of other things that are happening in the life of the church. So um, let's see that now. Hi folks, Matt here. I want to tell you about a Christian beliefs class that we have coming up on the 14th of October. We're going to be talking about the biblical view of God, how we view God, how we know God. We're also going to be talking about the Trinity. What is the significance of this idea of the Trinity? What even is it? These are really important things for us as Christians to know and to understand. And that's the goal of this class. It will be an opportunity for you to ask questions and engage we're going to be doing this via Zoom, so we'll be sending out the Zoom links uh, through social media and Slice and all the rest. So 14th of October, 7.30pm, look forward to seeing you there for our Christian Beliefs class. Perfect. Yes. We all have that person in our lives, that neighbour we pass by every day outside our homes. That co-worker we see at the office five days a week. Or those friends we catch up with every once in a while. People we wish could know and experience the love of God. How do we share it? Where do we even start? Deep inside, we know that it will cost us something to open up our lives and share our faith. It takes time, vulnerability, sacrifice, the risk of rejection. But this is our call to open our lives and to share Christ with the people close to us. Because it's only through opening your life up that spaces for honest conversations are possible. Spaces where people can truly be themselves and explore the deepest parts of life with people they know and trust. That's why we're running Alpha. It's a course over several weeks where you can invite your friends to explore life's biggest questions over a meal. It's a chance for you to invite that person into an honest conversation about faith because when it's hard to find the moment or the words or the courage, you can simply invite. Alpha, who will you invite?
Well, hello. My name is Sal Parker and I am one of the pastors here at One Hope. It's really great to be with you today and to be sharing some of my thoughts and reflections with you on the book of Ecclesiastes. We as a church have been reading through this book over the last few weeks. Many of you will have been following along with the Thrive Daily Reading Program. And uh, you will know if you have been that we are right in the middle of it, right in the thick of this book at the moment. For those of you that perhaps aren't overly familiar with this book uh, and you haven't maybe been reading along with us, let me paint a little bit of a picture of what the book of Ecclesiastes is like. The writer of this book is a person dealing with an internal conflict. The writer has an incredible depth of wisdom. They are rich in the earthly sense and they also know God. The writer though is struggling with finding the meaning of life. Can you relate? They look around at their life and they struggle to find meaning. They look around at the world. They look at all that they have done, all that they've experienced. They look at the lives of others and it all seems pointless, meaningless. Though the writer also knows God, they know that God wants us to enjoy our life here on earth. And so the writer finds themselves conflicted. And as we read through this book, we really feel this conflict. We are drawn into this place of confusion with the writer. This book validates our own struggles to find meaning in life. The writer even suggests that the search for meaning itself is meaningless if there's not another dynamic at play. The search for meaning cannot be found simply by us. Our futile human minds cannot find the meaning of life alone. There is another dynamic that needs to be at play in order for us to find meaning. As someone who has lived for more than five minutes, we all know that there we all know that we are never going to get the answers to some of life's questions. In fact, there are some things that happen to us in our life that no matter how much we search for meaning, no matter how much we try to spiritualise them, we will never really understand why these things have happened. The search for meaning in this life is not found in this life. The meaning of this life is found in the next. And that's the idea that I want to reflect on a little bit with you today. The writer of this book very clearly communicates to us that life is meaningless if not for God. Whether the pursuit is good or bad, it's all meaningless, if not for God. And I've been sitting in this book the last couple of weeks. And as I have, there's been a few different pictures that have come to my mind. And today, I really just want to share with you some of those pictures and reflections that I've had. And I am trusting and hoping that God will take my words, which, as we know, in and of themselves are meaningless, I'm trusting that God will take my words and he will bring purpose and meaning out of them as his Holy Spirit inhabits them. So would you join me as I just pray for a moment that God, uh, as I pray and commit my words to him and as we all take a moment to turn our hearts to him and make ourselves available to hearing his voice today. Let's pray. Lord, I want to take a moment to bring these words that I have prepared before you. 
Lord God, these words in and of themselves are meaningless. It is only through your Holy Spirit that they can have purpose and meaning in people's lives. And so I commit these words to you. And Lord, we all, as we sit and listen to this message today, make ourselves available to you. Would you speak to us? Would you change us? Would you make us more like your son, Jesus, as we listen and as we reflect together today? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shadow Tiggy. Have you ever played Shadow Tiggy? It's pretty much the same as normal Tiggy. Someone is it and they chase the others around trying to tag them. Shadow Tiggy is just like normal Tiggy, though instead of having to physically tag someone, all you need to do is land on their shadow. It's a great game. It's fun, gets the heart rate up. But let's face it, it's a little bit frustrating. Uh, I find myself playing Shadow Tiggy. I land on a shadow and before I can say you're it, the shadow has moved. The other frustrating thing about this game is that someone else has to have seen you land on the shadow in order for you really to be able to declare that they are now it. If no one else has seen it, you can't prove that you've landed on the shadow. So it's pretty frustrating. <laughs> you can't grab hold of a shadow. You can't really tag a shadow. No one can feel you tag the shadow. And after playing this game for a little while, you might find yourself saying these same words as the writer of Ecclesiastes. This is meaningless. This is utterly meaningless. I am chasing a shadow. I can't touch a shadow. Chasing a stinking shadow. There's a sentence in this book that is repeated over and over again. And this sentence is, a chasing after the wind. Take a moment to think about this sentence. Maybe close your eyes and imagine yourself chasing the wind. Can you think of anything more pointless? Chasing the wind. The writer of Ecclesiastes says this, I have seen all the things that are done under the sun all of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. He then goes on to say, then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned that this too is a chasing after the wind. Everything this world has to offer, wealth, possessions, popularity, career, work, friendships, education, even wisdom itself is like the breeze of the wind. And even our very selves are referred to as a shadow in this book. Our very presence on earth is like a shadow. The things of this world, we can see them, we can chase after them, we can land on them and we can declare ourselves the winner only to look down and discover that the target has moved. The shadow has moved. We chase after the good grades and we look down only to realise that the target has moved. We chase after the dream of love only to discover that it's actually not that much of a dream. We chase after the dream job. We get it only to look down and realise that the dream job is now something else. We land on the perfect income, only to look down to discover that the, now the perfect income is over there. We chase people's approval, only to look around and see that this too is intangible, a chasing after the wind. So why do we do it? Why do we play this game? 
Why are we chasing the wind? When I look at my life, I cannot believe how much time I have, and I'll be honest, I still do spend chasing the wind. We're given a clue as to why we do this. In chapter three of this book, the writer has this amazing sentence. Let me read this to you in the context of the, of the paragraph it's written. Chapter three, verse nine to 14, it says, what do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden of God. I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. He has set eternity in the human heart. The destination of eternity is what our hearts long for. As though our hearts are a GPS that have been programmed to eternity. Eternity is the destination that has been pre-programmed into our hearts. No matter what direction we turn, no matter how many stops we have along the way, no matter where we go, our hearts will always want to recalibrate towards eternity. It is programmed into us by our creator, the maker of heaven and earth. He has designed us to be with him. And we will always be drawn to that, whether we recognise it or not. The words of C.S. Lewis, he says it like this. If I find in myself desires, nothing in this world can satisfy. The only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. And so the writer of Ecclesiastes finds himself right in the thick of this realisation that nothing in this world will satisfy him because he was made for another world. An image that kept coming to mind as I've been reading this book over the last few weeks is the image of the prodigal son in the pigsty. When I think about Solomon, when I think about the writer of this book, I picture the prodigal son from the book of Luke, a man who had it all, a man who went searching, a man who experienced all that he could experience in this world. He pursued all the pleasures that he could possibly pursue only to find himself in a pigsty. When I read the book of Ecclesiastes, I am reminded that this place of realising our meaninglessness, this place that is the pigsty, is an important place to arrive at. Not so that we stay in this point, but this point is important. It's important that we get to this place. We need to allow ourselves to sit in this space for a moment, to look around at our lives and realise that it's all meaningless without God. And the prodigal son, in this moment, he's in the pigsty. He has a decision to make. He can either stay here or he can remember where he came from and he can make the decision to turn homeward, to repent. This place of realising our meaninglessness is important because it's in this place that we come to repentance. We use this word repentance in church quite a bit and we say that it's 
turning around and heading in the opposite direction. And it is, but it's so much more than that. It's actually turning from one direction and heading homeward. It's not just heading in a random opposite direction, it's heading homeward. And as we know, in this story of the prodigal son, when the son decides to turn homeward and begin to head home, we know what happens. The father sees him coming and the father comes running. As a teenager, I lived on a farm for a few years. We had a long driveway that I used to walk up to catch the bus to school and I would walk back down that long driveway at the end of the school day. Also, we we were on a long country road and if anyone was approaching our house, we could see them from a kilometre or so away. And so when I picture this story, I picture the father running down the long driveway and along the long country road to meet his son. And he gets to his son and he embraces him. And it doesn't say this in the story, but we know that this must be the case. He then walks with his son the rest of the way home. I love this picture because when I think of this picture of the father walking his son home. This to me is the picture of the Christian life on earth. We are heading homeward. We are heading towards eternity. That's the destination. But also eternity has come to meet us. It's in our hearts and he is walking us home. We are heading home, but home has come to meet us. It's in this that we find meaning. It's in knowing where we are going. It's in knowing who is walking with us that we find meaning in the journey. Paul writes to the Corinthians, In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, do not run like someone running aimlessly. We know how the story ends. We've already got the prize. So enjoy the race. Enjoy the race. So you might be sitting there thinking, okay, Sal, this is all good. Yep, I'm a Christian. I'm on the way home. I know Jesus is walking with me. It's all good. I get it. But Why do I still keep finding myself chasing the wind? I identify. I so often stop and look around and realise that I am back playing Shadow Tiggy again and I didn't even realise. I find myself sitting on the couch and the Netflix countdown begins, which I'm pretty sure it used to be 20 seconds, but now is it, is it five? I don't know, but it's too quick. The ads pop up on Google. The anxiety grows within me and I convince myself that I need something more. I convince myself that I need more money, that I need to be better at this or better at that, or that I need to be more successful in order to be satisfied. Why does it keep happening? Why do I keep finding myself chasing the wind again? Well, my illustration for us today is, you know, when you play Tiggy and someone tags you, what do they say? You're it. You're it. I gotcha. You're it. It's as though 
It's as though in life I've said, it's all good, guys. I'm going to sit this one out. I'm not playing this game anymore. I'm running a different race. And then all of a sudden, someone's tagged me. You're it, Sal. And all of a sudden, I find myself running and playing the game again. You know, this is what the world whispers to us all the time. You're it. You're it. It's all about you, Sal. You're it. Come on. What do you want? This life is all about you pursuing your pleasures and your desires. You're the one you should be serving. You're it. You're it. And before we've even realised it, we've started running again and we're chasing the wind. Jesus says to us in Matthew chapter 6, listen to this. And why do you worry about your clothes, Sal? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not more, how, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. The pagans run after these things Everyone is playing shadow tiggy all around us. People are chasing the wind all around us. The rat race is going on all around us. Everyone is chasing the wind. And it requires intention on our part to ensure that we don't slip back into playing this game. To be in the world but not of the world is hard. We need to live intentionally. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Chase the source of the wind and the wind will blow on you. Don't chase the wind, chase the source of the wind and as you do, the wind will blow on you. He wants to give us good gifts. He is a good father who wants to give us good gifts. But we do not chase the blessing, we chase the blesser. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says this, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What is unseen is eternal. We fix our eyes on what is unseen. We remember where we are going. As the writer approaches the end of this book, as, as the writer has been processing the meaninglessness of life, in chapter 12, he begins to make some comments that really struck me. These words, remember your creator. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well and the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Remember, remember your creator. There is urgency in this. We need to remember 
before it's too late. We need to remember our Creator. We need to remember Jesus and what He's done. We need to remember the direction in which we are heading and who is walking with us. As Paul says, do not run as someone running aimlessly. Have you ever driven home on autopilot? You know, when you've moved house and you're heading home from work or from school or from church and you're heading home on autopilot, you pull into the driveway only to realise that you're in the wrong driveway. Are you driving home on autopilot? Often we think that remembering is something passive, like we're remembering something that happened in the past and it doesn't necessarily affect our future. But remembering affects our future. When we remember something, it changes our future. When I remember that I've got a shirt at the dry cleaners that I'm supposed to pick up that day, that changes how I live out the rest of my day. It changes what I do with my day. I need to pick it up. When we remember where we are going and who is going with us, we will end up at the right house. If we drive home on autopilot, we can't be surprised when we arrive at the wrong house. I find myself heading home on autopilot sometimes. I know that the Father has come running. I know that He has embraced me and I know that we are walking together. But I find myself sometimes walking home on autopilot. And it's when I do this, that those words that the world whispers to me catch me and I find myself playing the game again. If you are walking home on autopilot, do not be surprised if you end up at the wrong house. You may find yourself back in the pigsty. The meaning for today is found in the destination we are walking towards. This is urgent, guys. We need to remember where we're going. We often say, life is just about the journey, you know, it's just about the journey. It's just about the experiences that we have along the way. It's about living for today, learning and living. It's just all about the journey. Well, yeah, kind of, but not really. It's all about the destination. And it's the destination that brings purpose and meaning to the journey. It's the destination that brings purpose and meaning to the journey. So my question for us, for you today is, do you know where you're going? Do you know what the destination is? And if you're watching this today and you honestly can't answer that question. You honestly don't know where you're going and what your destination is. Can I just say to you today that your life has meaning and purpose. Your life is not an accident. Your life can have purpose and meaning. When God sent Jesus Christ to the earth, that was God running down the driveway to meet you, to walk you home. You don't need to keep chasing the wind. You don't need to keep chasing the things of this world. Receive his embrace today. Receive his embrace and let him walk you home. Let me read to you this verse if you are unsure of your destination. Romans 10 verse 9, it says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. Your destination will be secure. Is it that simple? Yes, it's that simple. And that's what we kind of love about this book and kind of hate about this book is we goes on and on for 11 chapters, meaningless, meaningless, meaningless. 11 chapters to get to one verse that says this in conclusion, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the duty of all mankind to love God and to love one another. The whole law is summed up in these two commandments that we would love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and that we would love our neighbour as ourself. It is that simple. And maybe you're watching this today and you're a bit like me and you find yourself sometimes walking home on autopilot. Sometimes you find yourself chasing after the wind again and playing this game of shadow tiggy that the world is playing. God's grace is sufficient. Simply recalibrate the GPS today. Recalibrate your heart towards eternity. Remember where you came from. Remember your creator and head home. Remember and head home. So we're going to pray now. And this prayer is not about me praying for you. This prayer is an opportunity for you to commit your life to Jesus afresh today. Maybe for the first time, maybe you're in the pigsty and you are doing this for the first time. Maybe you are on the journey and you are just on autopilot and you And this prayer is an opportunity for you to recalibrate your heart towards eternity today. So would you join me as we pray together? Heavenly Father, without you, life is meaningless. Lord, we come before you today and we want to say sorry that we have been pursuing the things of this earth. We are sorry that we've been chasing the wind. We acknowledge right now in this moment that we can never catch them, that we were designed to be satisfied by eternity with Jesus and that's all. We take this moment to repent, to turn homeward for the first time or once again. We recalibrate our hearts towards eternity. We remember our Creator and we remember who is walking us home. The same power that Christ, that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. We remember this right now. And Lord, we commit our lives to You afresh right now. Bring purpose and meaning to our lives today as we fix our eyes on you and as we remember that you are by our side. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's sing Jesus. Jesus at the centre of it all. Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus Jesus, nothing else matters Nothing in this world will do Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus, you, Jesus, be the center of my life. 
always be the center of my life from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you jesus jesus nothing Yes, it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens. Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens. Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about. church and every knee will bow and every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you Jesus 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 That's certainly a great message that we've heard today. And those words that we've just sung together, Jesus at the centre, there's probably no more appropriate words as Sal talked about the recalibration of our hearts, that we'd sing together, Jesus at the centre of our lives. And I want to encourage all of us today that they're words to sing in a song, but more than that, they're an invitation of a life to live. And so I want to speak to people today, as Sally's reference, that maybe you find yourself just really wondering if you're in the right place or you're even headed in the right direction. Can I just reaffirm that sometimes when God is doing that recalibration in our life, it seems like we look one way and the other and just wonder, am I in the right place? I would encourage you today that you are, that look for what God is doing. Continue to pray that prayer that Sally invited us to pray, that that invite Jesus into our every day, that His Spirit would speak to us and lead us. And also, if there's anything we can do to help with that, we would love to um, journey with you on that because sometimes we get clarity by the people we have around us. And we've all been there and experienced that, that we, we want to find um, purpose and meaning in our lives. And God will use other people. He will use the Bible and He will use His Holy Spirit Spirit to confirm in us what He wants to do in us. So a great message today and let's take uh, that with us. And if we can help with anything, get in touch with the, maybe you're watching live at our 9.30 or 6 o'clock, chat with one of the hosts. Otherwise you can check out the website, leave a message there under connect and we'll be um, in contact during the week. That'd be, that'd be great. So, so glad you could join with us today. We've got a bunch going on in the life of the church, Alpha and Christian Beliefs. Follow us on social media, One Hope Baptist Church and stay in the loop. Otherwise check out the website as well and we really hope you have a great week look forward to seeing you soon take care
One Kedge Geelong comes from humble beginnings, from serving barbecue chickens in bread rolls at our community meal, to providing hundreds of meals for our community during the height of COVID. One thing that hasn't changed is our passion and commitment to offering support to those in the community who are disadvantaged and socially isolated. Our programs are designed to empower our participants and promote community inclusion with the goal of reducing entrenched disadvantage in Geelong. Our community meal program has been a hub of activity over the years with lots of rich diversity and some lifelong friendships made. We aim to create a safe place for people to come, to be supported, to create meaningful relationships and to be a part of the wonderful things that are happening at OneCare. Our amazing staff and volunteers are always here to be listening ears and provide support however they can. We understand that times can be tough and we want to do what we can to help those most in need. Our new food bank program has been a wonderful way for OneCare to work towards increasing food security by providing nutritious meals and groceries while also spending time with our community. Walking through life alone can be tough we all need people to walk alongside us. The Coach Mentoring Program is designed to partner trained volunteers with individuals and families living with challenging life issues. Our Coach Mentors are offering practical help and mentoring towards life goals. Sometimes life can seem overwhelming and just too difficult to manage. For times like these, our professional and supportive counsellors are here for you. Our affordable counselling services provide support for individuals, couples and families in a person-centred approach. What makes all this happen is our volunteers. OneCare volunteers are an incredible group of people committed to helping their community. OneCare simply would not be able to do what we do without them and we are so grateful for them. If you would like to be a part of what OneCare is doing, we would love you to donate. You can go to our website for more information. One Care Geelong is committed to supporting our wonderful city by building community, restoring hope and changing lives.